What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be building the 125 gallon planted tank here in the fish room. Now it's been about two months since I planted this setup and I wanted to show you guys the entire process from uh, building it as well as kind of the ups and downs with the new substrate and of course what it looks like today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go and talk about the tank and the sump. Now I picked these up from a local hobbyist who's had both of these in storage for the last 10 years but they were in their original boxes. They've never seen water, and uh, they still had the original stickers on there. I think this tank had a, a seven-year warranty sticker on the front of it, which is pretty awesome, and it, I can see why. The thing is heavy, probably the heaviest 125 I've ever picked up since I've been in the hobby. Um, it, they don't make tanks like this anymore, trust me. Uh, with that being said, I got them both for about $200, and I was a little iffy about the silicone because it wasn't as if you just picked up a tank from your local fish store. It was a little hard, but what would you expect being in storage for the last 10 years? So what I figured I would do is build the stand, get the tank on there, fill it up with water, and let it sit for about 30 days just to make sure there wasn't any leaks, that the silicone was good to go before actually planting it. And that's exactly what I did. Now, when it comes to the sump, it's just a standard acrylic trickle filter bio ball uh, type of setup, which is perfect for a planted tank. All I really did differently was uh, drill the top of it with two overflows so I can actually connect both of them uh, instead of it just coming with the single one in the front. And of course, bypassed all the hosing that came with it and went with straight PVC, which you guys will see later in the video. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the stand layout. Now, this is my typical setup. If you've been here for a while, this is how I build every stand for any kind of tank that I've had over the last couple years. And it has the triple support on each corner as well as the dual support on the front and back middle there. And if you want to learn specifically how to build this stand, check out some of my previous build videos and playlists here on the channel for this more in-depth look at the setup. Now, because I've built it so many times, I didn't figure I would uh, go through it all again for this video. I just figured I'd just show you what it looked like. Now, once the stand was completed, I went ahead and put it on top of the tank just to make sure I had clearance for those uh, corner overflows. Now, that's just one of a couple reasons why I don't like these type of overflows is the clearance on the side there. kind of have to chisel out some of the wood to make sure that the PVC will fit, as well as the side view of seeing how dirty the overflow box is. But again, beggars can't be choosers. I got a great deal on this tank, so I was willing to deal with it. As you guys can see, I already painted the bottom and back of this tank with my Rust-Oleum oil base flat black paint. Uh, the same paint, again, I use in every build that I have here in the fish room. All right, now that the tank and stand are in place, it's time to go ahead and do some modifications to the sump. Now, the first thing I did was drill two holes for one-inch bulkheads on the top lid of the sump, which, again, I would attach the drain lines to, and that way everything is hard-lined PVC'd. All right, so moving on to the overflows, I went ahead and built the Durso type of setup. Uh, this just seems to be very common for these types of overflows, so I decided just to go with that uh, setup. Now, I picked up the fittings from BulkReefSupply.com and got the PVC from my local fish store. Now, it took a little bit to fit everything in there to make sure it lined up perfectly, but what's good about having dual overflows is you just build one and then completely copy it over and make the second one, and it works out just fine. Now I did still add the one inch ball valves to the drain line just in case I ever had to turn them off completely for maintenance or I had to remove the sump or whatever. Um, but usually you just keep them wide open for this type of overflow. All right, moving on to the return pump, I decided to go with the JBO DCP 6500, which after doing a, quite a bit of research and talking to the manufacturer is one of the only JBO return pumps that can be used externally as you guys will see later in the video. Now the pump is about 1200 gallons per hour and it comes with fittings that are for one half inch, three quarter inch or one inch. Now I will be using a one inch from the sump to the input and then a three quarter inch from the output to the manifold that feeds the carbon reactor as well as both of the return lines. Now it was relatively easy to plumb this. I just test fitted everything before actually gluing it in place, making sure that everything was going to line up and there was not going to be any kind of leaks. Now, of course, I always use a Wayne check valve for any of my personal builds, the one and only check valve, and I will never, ever use anything else because it's perfect and works every single time. All right, now that the system is plumbed, test filled, and currently running just to see if it leaks or has any issues over the next 30 days, I'm going to go ahead and purchase uh, some wood as rock and some gravel from my local fish store. I actually got it at that fish place in Lancaster, PA. Went ahead and picked out two pieces of, uh, I guess, uh, log, driftwood, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I picked it out out of a huge bin. It took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do, trying to imagine what it was going to look like. And it actually turned out to be something different uh, later on anyways, which you guys will see kind of later in the video. Either way, I went ahead and filled up my 50-gallon drum here with RODI water, put both of the logs in there, 
added a piece of rock just to make sure that they stayed uh, below the surface and of course this is kind of the process of leaching the tannins which I plan on doing for at least 30 days to get as much of that out of the water as I can so it's not kind of making the tank very cloudy and over time after adding it to the tank with the carbon and everything you will actually pull out the rest of the tannins so the tank doesn't have that murky look to it now uh, once that was done I decided to start building the canopy now the canopy is kind of my standard hanging canopy with my DIY light setup I like to use these uh, 120 watt equivalent um, LED bulbs 5k from Home Depot and this tank even though you see only 12 in here I actually upgraded to having 15 of these bulbs now all said and done that's about 1800 watts of lighting in the 5k spectrum which is what I've used in pretty much all of my planted tanks that 5k spectrum seems to grow them perfectly fine now it doesn't give you that crisp white color that you see on a lot of the LED fixtures but it does provide a great spectrum for growth and of course 1800 watts is a ton of lighting which will be perfect for the co2 and the type of plants I want to grow in this tank all right so let's go ahead and fast forward 30 days and start building this tank now I decided to go with the harvest organics potting mix in hindsight I would have actually uh, put this dirt in a barrel with RODI and did many many water changes over a week or so getting the excess nutrients out of the uh, dirt now I usually don't use this type I tend to stick with the miracle Grow organic choice potting mix but I could not find it and the place that I did find it was way too expensive I think they discontinued it so I got to use something else so uh, anyways I went ahead and uh, just put that straight into the tank after getting out as much of the sticks and twigs but before I did that I actually built some little hills using lava rock and mesh bags so that way I don't have to have a ton of uh, dirt in that area and we can avoid having those pockets of bacteria so I built some little hills there and of course added the soaked dirt or potty mix whatever you want to call it and kind of did a good uh, what inch inch and a half layer before actually adding the gravel substrate all right so after a couple hours of messing with the aquascape I was pretty satisfied so I decided to go ahead and fill it up with RODI water now I use RODI in all of my planted tanks and I do add a buffer to it which you guys will see later in the video but for these first few water changes I did not do that I simply used uh, the RODI water to pull out the tannins from not only the logs but also from the dirted substrate now I did two 100% RODI water changes on this tank uh, for the first two weeks before actually um, starting to add the buffer and getting plants to pull out some of those excess nutrients. Now when it comes to plant selection for this I pretty much had an idea of what I wanted to look like. Uh, you really have to run through uh, just experience with plants how they're going to grow and kind of how the tank is going to look. You don't obviously want to put a carpeting plant behind a uh, background plant and just when it makes sense. So you kind of have to figure out background, foreground and carpeting all that kind of stuff. You really want to uh, figure that out. And with that being said I will do an in-depth video on each plant species and kind of how they grow and why I selected that plant. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to avoid it here just so the video isn't uh, 30 minutes long but to pretty much sum it up we have some dwarf hair grass as my um, carpeting plant we have some s repins on the hills some woody in the back amazon swords and uh, jungle bow in the back as well as some um, java ferns and stuff like that on the wood so again stay tuned for that in-depth video on each plant species all right now that we have plants in the tank it's time to go ahead and set up the co2 I'm using my standard glass diffuser with the acrylic uh, disc. Now there's a couple different types of CO2 diffusers I use. I wanted to try the bubble counter in there, but it was pointless. It just didn't work out. I ended up switching back to my original one. But either way, it's the same concept. The glass diffuser with the ceramic disc shoots the bubbles up, and then I have them going into a power head, which then shoots the CO2 across the tank. And this seems to be uh, what I get the best bang for my buck when it comes to using the CO2. And uh, yeah, everything worked out great. It was growing pretty good for about a week or so and then I started running into some issues with some hair algae now green hair algae is very common in a planted tank but I do find it a lot easier to take care of opposed to a reef tank now it's really a mixture of excess light excess nutrients from the substrate but really what it is is an imbalance of co2 and uh, if you can dial it in and fix that co2 you can really do a lot of damage to that green hair algae and clear it up in a matter of a couple weeks and that's exactly what I did now the green hair algae got bad for the very first week then I started dosing a liquid co2 as well as increase my co2 on my reactor and then I went ahead and actually removed all the fish because I didn't want to choke them out I had a feeling I was putting a lot in there I didn't want to choke them out so I just threw them in quarantine for a couple weeks while I was cleaning up the hair algae issue I also cut back my lighting down to only 12 bulbs and I cut the light time 
from uh, 12 hours to about six hours. So you just gotta kind of adjust it as you go. And uh, I knew I had a risk of running into this. I know with the Organic Choice Potting Mix, I never had an issue with green hair algae, but I had a feeling when I opened up that bag of this uh, new stuff with all the twigs and the sticks, I was like, uh, I might have an issue with green hair algae. And of course, when it popped up, I was ready for it. I was doing big water changes and then did everything that I just mentioned previously, and it was gone in a matter of a couple weeks. Now that really brings us where we are today. The tank is doing quite well. It's back to normal with the 12 hour lighting schedule. The CO2 is pumping really good. I am still dosing the liquid CO2 at least until the bottle runs out. And uh, the fish are back in there. They're definitely glad to be out of that 20 gallon um, quarantine tank for the second time. And uh, everything seems to be doing well. The plant growth is really good. I am trimming during my water changes. And speaking of water changes, the maintenance for this tank is quite simple. It's a 50% every single week and replaced with the RODI buffered with equilibrium. Now I will actually remove the pad in the sump every other week because it doesn't really get that dirty in seven days. So about every 14 days I will remove the uh, pad in the sump there which just catches all the uh, leaves and poop and all sorts of stuff. And uh, I basically go in there and pull out any detritus out of the sump and that's about it. And uh, yeah, I really like this setup. I really enjoy having it here in the fish room. Um, I'm definitely a planted tank guy. I know that we talk a lot about salt water here, but planted tanks, if I could choose between the two, I would go planted tank every single time. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions about this setup or you want to know anything specific about it, please let me know. I'll be happy to make more videos. Now, when I was talking about my 60 gallon cube planted tank when the channel uh, first started a few years ago or what, two and a half years ago, I uh, didn't get a lot of views on those videos. But if you guys like that kind of stuff, I'll be more than happy to talk about freshwater plants since I tend to know more about planted tanks than I do salt water and I'd be happy to talk about them. But if not, I'm more than comfortable just sticking with salt water. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later. Peace.